Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to start straight away just because we've a, a short session here today. Uh, so my name is Roisin from the Department of Technology Enhanced Learning. Um, I'll turn off my, my camera in a moment. I just want to thank you for joining this session today and for your interest in uh, in this new tool that we're, um, we're showcasing today. Um, the recording of the session will be available um, afterwards for anybody who, who couldn't make it or who would like to, to go over any of the bits covered here today. Um, so I'm just going to start into it. Um, so what we're looking at today is the new You Do It accessibility checker that has been integrated into Canvas here in MTU. Uh, so this is a pilot we have in place for the coming semester. So we would be very grateful if uh, those of you who are interested in using it would like to provide some feedback on the tool. I'll give a bit more information on this at the end of, of the session. Um, so you do it stands for Universal Design Online Content Inspection Tool, a little bit of a mouthful, um, but it's a module level accessibility checker, <clears throat> meaning that it's available within each individual module in Canvas. Um, it's an optional tool at the moment, so you can activate it um, within your module navigation. And I'll go through this um, shortly when I jump over into the demo. Um, and you do it was designed to largely sort of help raise awareness of, of common accessibility issues that might affect a student's ability to read or access or interact with um, learning content. Um, but in addition, you do it provides suggestions and options for fixing any issues that were identified. And many of these fixes or updates um, can be made within the tool itself. So um, it's it's a uh, it's all in one place um, to to save time. So by common accessibility issues, they're referring to the issues identified in the web content accessibility guidelines. So specifically, WCAG two point one. Um, which is the standard for accessible digital content. So these guidelines were developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C, um, which develops international standards for design and development on the web. So things like HTML and CSS and things like that. Um, it's also these standards that, that accessibility legislation is generally based on. So it's important to be aware of them. Um, so when a module is scanned, you do it provides a list of errors and suggestions. So the errors are categorized as more important issues based on the WCAG 2.1 um, guidelines that would most likely cause issues for a user and should be fixed. Um, the suggestions offer some, well, suggestions um, for changes that would improve the learning environment. So they should also be considered, um, but uh, errors are typically the ones that, uh, that should be focused on first. Um, suggestions also tend to be a little bit trickier to fix um, and are often um, things that need to be fixed, um, say, um, outside of, of you do it, the tool. Um, so you do it scans a number of areas in a Canvas module. Um, there are a few limitations, but some of these um, are included in the roadmap um, for updates in, in the future. Um, so some of the areas that it scans are announcements, assignments, um, so these would be anywhere where you've kind of added uh, text content in the rich um, uh, content editor. Um, it scans quizzes, but only classic quizzes. The reason for this is the new quizzes is uh, is, is seen as an external tool in, in Canvas, um, but it will scan the, the content for, for classic quizzes. It scans discussions. Um, so these would be discussion topics rather than replies. Um, it scans files, but only HTML files. Um, but there is a, a, a quite handy area to review other file formats um, where you'll also be able to kind of, it'll give you suggestions for how to update it. And then um, it'll also give you an area to, to actually upload the updated file. Um, it scans pages, it scans the syllabus, and then it scans uh, module URLs. So um, only certain links will be checked. So these are, are YouTube or Vimeo links. Um, but again, I'll go into this um, in a little bit more detail. In addition to you do it, some of you might be aware of it, there are two other accessibility integrations in Canvas. So one is the Immersive Reader. Um, this is Microsoft's Immersive Reader that um, some of you might know already. 
um, from, from the Office suite. Um, so this gives users more control over the, the presentation of course content and pages. Um, the other tool, the accessibility checker, the Canvas accessibility checker, is like a little bit of a light version of you do it. So um, it scans some of the common accessibility issues, um, not as many as you do it does, but it needs to be run within the content itself rather than at module level. Um, so these tools, of course, can be used in tandem, and I'll point um, these out shortly when we when we pop over into Canvas. Um, so you do it will help to identify common accessibility issues, um, including the the following items. So. Uh, this it, this information is available on the you do it um, interface and again I can show you that when we get into it um uh, so it's also there as a kind of a quick reference guide we have some help articles as well at the moment and we'll be updating those um over the next uh, couple of weeks as we kind of run our tests or if we get any feedback from anybody um who's using it and we'll be able to up to update those um, so some of the common accessibility issues include use of headings in the page structure. So this is sort of ensuring that the, con the correct hierarchy is used with headings. So um, H1 followed by H2, not skipping any, you know, not moving from H1 to H3 or anything like that. Um, just making it more, um, just making it clearer for anybody who might be using a screen reader. Um, another common one is alternative text for images. So this is um, describing the image for the benefit again of those using a screen reader. So if it's um, if it's a decorative image, um, it can be skipped. You can mark it as as such in the interface. Um, but but really try trying to give as much information as possible to to anybody who's using something like a screen reader or anything like that. Um, table headers again helping screen readers. Um, by making sure there's a table header and that it's marked um, correctly in, in the content. Color contrast is another one. We, we don't tend to see this used that often within Canvas, but it can happen um, in PowerPoint or other files like that. Um, so if you have text over a colored background um, where there's insufficient sort of contrast between the background and the text on top of it, it'll get flagged as inaccessible. So um, you do it as a nice way of, of um, updating that. Um, video captions as well. So identifying whether a video has captions or if they're auto-generated. Um, so obviously no captions can cause issues um, and so can auto-generated ones that might be incorrect or might cause a little bit of confusion. So um, these are the these are the main ones that I'm going to go through today in the demo, um, just in the interest of time and everything like that. But um, as I said, they're the full list of them and any kind of associated help um, or resources are available within the interface. Just one caveat, I just want to mention, I suppose, with this tool, as with a lot of other software, this isn't going to solve all accessibility issues. It's not a certification tool to indicate accessibility compliance. Um, it's marketed as an educational tool. So it's aiming to help educators to understand common issues and it helps to speed up the process of fixing these, these errors or incorporating more accessible content uh, going forward. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump over into Canvas and I'm just gonna do a demo of you do it, how to add it to your Canvas module, and then how to how to interpret the results and how to fix some of those results. Um, so I'm here in my um, test Canvas module, and in order to add it to my navigation or to activate it within my module, I can go into the settings area and click on navigation, and I'll see you do it accessibility down here in the inactive area. So what I'll do is I'll just drag that up to the top, you can put it wherever you want. Um, students will not see this within the module. Um, it's only for lectures on the module. So you can put it wherever, you, wherever you'd like, wherever is more convenient for you. Um, just make sure you click save as well to um, save the changes. So you can see it here now in your module navigation. Every time you click on you do, ex you do it accessibility, it will run a scan. Um, the scan generally doesn't take very long. Um, maybe a few seconds. It can take up to a minute or so if it's a particularly large module, um, but generally it's done 
um, it's done quite quickly. And as I said, it is it's um, initiated when you click on that module, um, that, that navigation item in your in the side. Um, you will see a home page here at the start. So this has some information um, on you do it and the, the company that supports it. Um, you can see that my scan is now complete up here, but I just want to draw your attention to um, this link down here. So this is what I was mentioning earlier about the list of um, items that uh, you do with scans for. So these are listed as errors and suggestions. As I said, the errors are a little bit more um, important in order to fix. And if you click on any of these items, you'll see more information about it, um, about the particular error that, that shows up. So this is a kind of a handy reference um, that you have. You're able to skip this welcome message um, in the future if you like. Um, this page might update as well. And we put in some kind of local context here as well for, for um, you do it here in MTU. Um, if you do end up getting rid of this page or skipping it or anything like that, you can still access it by going up here to um, this menu item here and clicking on about and that will show this, uh, this page again. So if I want to look at the results of my scan, I can click here in the home menu, um, and this gives a summary of the um, scan results. So the amount of errors within the module, um, the amount of suggestions, and then these, these items here will be updated as you go through the content and as you make your, your changes and your updates to any of the issues that you find in it. Um, so at the moment, I have um, 13 errors, two suggestions, and I have nothing um, resolved or fixed. The top three most common errors will show up here, and it'll show the amount of times that it, um, it repeats within the, the module, this particular error. And then the most common suggestions that are occurring um, will show up here as well. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you come in here and you see all of the um, all of the errors show up, so they're they're quite aware of that. Um, so what they are what they're after bringing in quite recently is this filtering tool over here, ways to get started. What it allows you to do is filter the results based on a few different criteria. So you can filter based on what's easiest to fix. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, anything that can it, it usually refers to things that you can fix within the UDoIt interface. Um, you can filter by errors only, and it'll show you here how many will show up. Um, for any of these options, you just click get started once you've you've selected it. Um, all open issues, this is the one that can be um, really quite overwhelming because it will show you everything all in one list and it can look like a huge amount um, to update depending on the, the content that's in your module. You can um, You can filter by issue type. So this will allow you to show the, the particular issues or the errors that um, you do it has found. And then when you click on that, it'll show you the amount of errors and you can get started there. This can be quite useful if you want to tackle all, all, all of one particular issue at a time. So you want to um, change the alt text for, your, for all of your images at once, um, different things like that. Another option is to filter by content type. Um, this isn't... I suppose this isn't perhaps as useful um, because it just filters by the particular area within your, your Canvas module, but maybe you will you will find use for it. Um, as you can see here as well, you have the list of the areas that you do with scans, so discussions, quizzes, HTML files. And you also have the ability to filter by impact type. So this refers to the individual um, I suppose, a, a, a certain category of um, impairments or, or disabilities. So um, if you, for instance, have a student who has disclosed a visual um, impairment, if they have an auditory issue, cognitive issue, remoter issue, you can come in here and prioritize the fixing of the issues that will mostly affect people with those particular um, impairments or disabilities. Um, so that can be quite a useful um, uh, way to filter the, the results of it as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click by issue type and I'm going to click on insuffic insufficient text color contrast with the background. Um, and I'm just going to click on get started there. 
So as I said at the start, I'm just going to go through um, a few of the errors just to kind of show you how you would um, make the adjustments within you do it or or if you have to do it kind of offline and then um, manually resolve them. Um, what the screen I'm in here now after I clicked on get started, you'll notice there's also another filter button up here. So that, um, if I clicked on that, it will give me the same filters that I saw on the home page just all at once. So you can kind of um, you can really um, adjust the filters or, or specify the, the results that you're going to view. Um, so this will show me the, the title of the page or anything like that, what type of content it is, if it's a page quiz. Um, and then the, the issue, which is what I filtered through. So I'm just going to click on the review button here. So that will show up um, a new pop up screen and it's showing me here a preview window over here, which shows that I have content over a colored background and um, it's seen the contrast ratio is um, is very, very low. So we need to try and improve that in any time that you do, it will show up the error it'll also give you a link directly to the content if you want to go and have a look at it within your canvas module as well and that opens up in a new page so you, or in a new tab so you can kind of go back and forth so for this what i'm going to do is um i'm going to look at i'm going to click on show color picker and i'm going to choose a color for my background and then i'm going to choose another color for my text and you can see that the contrast ratio has changed. It's gone green. It means it's valid. It's um, there's sufficient contrast between the background and the, the text on this. Um, so if I click on save. So that's um, that's updated that that's fixed that error within um, that page itself. Um, if I want to, I can close out of this and I can go into something else or else I can um, use these um buttons here to kind of move between the the different issues um so you'll see another one that i have this is in my classic quiz um i have another um highlighted um text on on colored background and i can do the same thing here if i wanted to go into the page itself and make the change maybe i want to just get rid of the background color altogether i can click on the link here this will show me my quiz and if i edit it um, I can get rid of the content here. If I do that, and if I click on save, when I go back here, I can click um, mark as resolved. So that's something that I've resolved within um, within the Canvas page itself. I am completely lying to the system now, so I'm that'll probably keep showing up in in my um, in my next scans. So that is one of the errors. So I'm just going to go back to my home page and I'm going to show you another one. Um, by issue type, I'm going to say heading levels should not be skipped and get started here. So this is a common accessibility issue you'll see if you're using Word or anything like that, where you're creating um, a kind of a structure to your document. So the same thing can happen in Canvas if you're using pages or anything where um, or if you're using the rich content editor where you're creating um, your content and you might be using a uh, header two, then going to a header four, it's it's going to it's not going to make as much sense to somebody using a screen reader. So if I go in here to click on review, um, I can have a look over here, my preview. If I want, I can jump to my HTML and see what's going on. So it's basically saying that I've jumped to um, H4. Um, so I'll go back to my preview here. You'll notice here as well that this is saying that this issue cannot be fixed within you do it. So it needs to be something that I, I fix in Canvas and then manually mark is resolved. So if I click on the page to, to access that content and click on edit, I can highlight the text and I can change it to um, heading three and I can just check my other content there. So that's heading two, this is heading three. So that will make more sense in terms of the structure of my content. While I'm here, I'm just going to show you the Canvas accessibility checker. So you can see when I'm editing this content, this is showing up here as well. So if I click on this, um, this is showing me another error as well for this page. 
So before I had changed that, this would also show the error of the of the heading issue as well. So this is what I mean when you can kind of use both of them in tandem. If you fixed this issue in the accessibility checker within this page, um, when you do it rescans the, the module, this error won't show up because it's already been fixed within the accessibility checker. So you can use both at, um, at the same time. So I'm just going to click on save there. And when I go back here, I'll click mark as resolved. So it's telling me now that because it was changed outside of you do it, I need to rescan um, to see if the issue has been resolved. Um, I'm going to close that one there. I'm just going to have a look at another issue. And by issue type. And I'm going to go to no table headers found. And I'm going to get started with this one. Okay, so um, I'll just have a look at reviewing this. So I have a table here in one of my um, pages. If I want to get, again, I can go and click on that. Um, but what it's telling me is that there needs to be table headers to provide a table structure uh, for some users. So what I'm going to do is click on row header um, and I'm going to see if that's the one I want. It's not the one I want. So I'm going to say column header. So this is going to make um, the these, uh, this text here as the, the table headers for this table. When I click on save, that's resolved um, that issue. I'm just going to go through two more things. I'm just conscious of the time there. Um, so just in terms of the biggest issues that are seen or the most common issues, I suppose, that are seen, <clears throat> excuse me, Apologies. So just in terms of the, um, the common issues, I'm going to go down to um, alternative text should not be image file name. So this is a very common issue that um, comes up in digital content, having not having alternative text for an image or else having the incorrect alternative text for an image. Um, so if I click on review here. So again, you see a little bit more information about this particular error. What it's saying to me is that I have alt text, which is the file name, um, which is not something that that should be done. Now, it's possible if this is an image that's purely decorative, it's not important for for the students to view. It's just something nice that you've added to your page. You can click on mark image as decorative so you can get rid of this and say mark image as decorative. And that's going to resolve that issue because it's telling a screen reader, ignore this. It's just decorative. It's not important. If it is an image that is, that's important, you can put in alt text so you can just describe the image a little bit. So um, this is uh, just a sample image that I've included for um, another piece of software and I'm just gonna click on save. So you can add a little bit more information on that if you want, you have up to 150 characters and um, just, just to help the, any student who's using a screen reader to to understand what the image is about, what it's showing um, and why it's important. So I'll just close that again. The final one I want to show you is the um, video captions one. So this is a this is a one that can be a, a small bit time consuming, perhaps, but so obviously closed captions are important with any um, video content that you have up. Um, what you do, it will do is it scans YouTube or Vimeo or Kaltura um, content, video content, and it'll advise based on that. So if you do, it was able to find um, closed captions that were auto generated or that it thinks were auto generated, or if it wasn't able to find closed captions at all. So if I click on review, so this is just a test video that, that was added. Um, so what I can do is I can scan the video for caption updates. So just in case any captions were added in the meantime, or I can kind of double check um, that you do it got it correct when it did do the initial scan. I can preview the video within the, um, the screen here. So I can have a quick look. And if I see that there are um, captions that are in it and they're, they're pretty good captions, I can mark it as resolved and that's fine. Um, 
so obviously um if if it is a case that there are no well not pr probably not obviously but if there is a, an issue where there are no um captions for a video or there are auto generated captions it might be something where you might want to reach out to the content creator um maybe you want to provide a transcript of the the vi of the captions or try try your hand at captions yourself if it's an important video um and try to to um resolve it that way one of the other errors that comes up in terms of captions for videos is if the captions are in a different language to the language of the Canvas module. So that's another one that gets highlighted as well, where it's saying, well, look, some of your students may not be able to understand these captions. Um, so maybe you want to kind of review it, ha have a look, see see if you want to add uh, additional information on it or anything like that. So I'm going to close that. Um, so there are the, fa the five main kind of errors that I wanted to go through. Um, another one I wanted to show you was the review file section here. So it's not possible to for you do it to scan um, PDFs or, or, or Word docs or anything at the moment. It is something that um, that is on the roadmap. Um, but they have a, an area here which shows the files that are uploaded for this particular module. It also gives you the option to, to review them. So if you click on this, it'll show you a little bit more information about sort of accessibility within PDF and the importance of PDF tags. Um, and what it allows you to do is to download the file, um, make your changes offline, save it, re-upload it here. And basically that will keep all the links to that content intact, but it will change the file itself. So you won't have to go through your module and change all the, if you have links to that file from a few different places in your Canvas module, you won't have to um, make any changes with that. It'll update um, all of that within it. So that can be um, sort of a useful tool there as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just click on the um, navigation item again over here and just basically generate a new scan and see what has been updated based on those changes that I've made. So when I click on the home menu, I can see that I've uh, three issues fixed. I have one manually resolved um, and my error count is, has been reduced as well. Um, so that's that's a very kind of brief overview of the tool. Obviously, there are more features or more errors that it'll scan for. Um, again, if you go back into the e about section here, You'll see all your information here, and you'll also see the the additional um, guidance that you have for those particular errors or those suggestions. So think there's some other ones about um, having transcripts for for media files, um, so for video or audio or anything like that, just to um, give a little bit more information. If um, content length is is um, exceeding three thousand words uh different different things like that it's 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 a lot to do with sort of how again here how students um uh access retain the information that that you have up there so it just gives a little bit of guidance for it um another thing you can do up here is you can click on the reports and this will show you an overview of the issues that are in your module what are errors compared to suggestions um it'll kind of filter them by type um, the severity of it, so whether it's an error or a suggestion. You can also um, have a look at kind of the history and what gets fixed as you as you go through it. Um, and again, just anything that was resolved over here. You can also then just bring any items up to the top here um, using that option there. Um, there is an option as well to download the report. It might be useful for you. It, it basically just shows, um, well, I'll see you now about downloading it here. It just shows you more information about the the actual errors and things like that. So it just gives you um, a kind of an overview of all the different errors and suggestions within your your content. 
does anyone have any questions at the moment? If you want to use the Q&A feature there. So as I mentioned, this is a, um, a pilot at the moment. So again, if you'd be interested in providing feedback, we'd be delighted. Um, you know, you can contact us at edtech at mtu.ie. Um, we'll be able to provide a link to a feedback form, or you can just um, give us informal feedback as well. We'll be collating all of this and we'll be having a look. As I said, we'll also be updating the help desk articles. So if we encounter any issues, if we think there's anything that we need to make you aware of um, related to you do it, we can do that there as well. And then if you just have any questions or if you start to use this yourself, if you have any questions or issues, you can um, just email us at edtech at mtu.ie as well. If there are no questions, um, I might finish up there. As I said, the um, link to the recording will be sent out afterwards for anybody who wants to go over any of the um, the, the topics that were covered here. Um, don't think we have anything at the moment. Okay, folks, so look, if anything, um, if anything comes up that you want to ask about afterwards, do feel free to email us at edtech at mtu.ie. Um, you can find our support guides um, at a uh, tellhelp.eu.helpdocs.com. A little bit hard to remember. So if you go to our site, go to support, um, I'm a lecturer, and then our staff knowledge base is up here and it'll link uh, directly to it. So we have some information on this software as well as Canvas and Zoom and, and things like that. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.